Okay, so this video is primarily to look at hard water and soft water as well, I suppose. Um, we're going to look at the formation, in other words, how does water actually become water. We're going to look at how do we actually remove this hardness from the water because there are problems associated with water being hard, uh, many of which you will have come across at home, whether you realise it or not. And we're going to look at the advantages of hard water and the disadvantages. Okay, so you're probably more familiar with disadvantages. So let's first of all ask ourselves, well, what actually is hard water? Well, it's water which has got a reasonably high proportion of dissolved <coughs> calcium ions or magnesium ions and that water then has an inability or it's very difficult or it, what we often say is that it doesn't readily lather with soap and that's how we can tell if water is actually hard okay so and the experiments that you do in class will involve you testing the water with soap to discover whether it does produce a lather, a nice frothy lather that you would um, associate with soap or not. So if we go back to this slide here and have a look, you can see the slide on the or the picture on the left, sorry, has got some water in it. Okay, it has had soap added from the burette and it's been shook up and you can see around the top of it really there isn't any particular nice frothy lather. And that's because the soap, when it goes in here, has actually reacted with the calcium ions and the magnesium ions. So instead of being used to clean your hands or clean your clothes, it's actually being used to react with the calcium and the magnesium ions. And that is therefore soap, which is wasted, lost, it's of no use. If we look on the right hand side, you can see see here a rather nice frothy lather so this is soft water water that does not contain very many calcium ions or magnesium ions and that means that the soap can actually do the job that the soap is supposed to do in other words clean so that is how you know whether your water is hard or soft okay does it produce a lather does it not produce a lather and the reason why it does or does not produce a lather is because of the presence of calcium and magnesium ions dissolved in the water. So the next question we need to ask ourselves then is, well, okay, how on earth do these calcium and magnesium ions get into the water? Well, if we look at the board now, you'll see an area which is fairly obviously a majority of the rock is limestone. And limestone contains a lot of calcium ions and limestone is predominantly calcium carbonate. So as you would imagine, uh, rainwater will flow over this area and perhaps some of the calcium ions that are in the calcium carbonate might be able to dissolve into the rainwater. But there's a problem. Very well. So how on earth can these calcium ions in this rock actually make their way into the water or get dissolved in the water if they're not actually soluble? Well, we have another picture on the screen now which shows a, a fairly stereotypical limestone area and you can see the grooves and the pits in the limestone where they have been eroded away, dissolved away and that has been done by rainwater. Or bits of the limestone rock, which quite clearly can be dissolved into rainwater. But as I said earlier, they cannot be dissolved directly into more water. There must be some chemistry at play in here, and that's the chemistry that we, uh, as GCSE students, need to understand. So there is indeed a two step process here. So if we think about all rainwater, well, what is it? Well, it is, of course just H2O, just water, okay? Now, in the atmosphere, everywhere around the world, there is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a gas, exists in the atmosphere, will of course come in contact with clouds, 
rain water. Now what can happen? Well, when those two things come together, they can form this compound here, which is referred to as carbonic acid. Now, carbonic acid is a weak acid. But nonetheless, it is strong enough to react with calcium carbonate, limestone, and therefore dissolve the limestone. So let's have a look at the chemistry as to what goes on. We'll put state symbols on here because in this um, entire topic, guys, state symbols are very important. So there's my carbonic acid. My carbonic acid will be in my little cloud and it will fall and it will fall on top of my limestone region, similar to the limestone regions that we looked at here. Okay, and in the one on the previous slide with the, the rocks. So let's have a look. Here's my limestone region, which contains calcium carbonate, which is of course a solid, so it's certainly not dissolved in water at the minute. The rainwater will fall, which is in fact that weak solution of carbonic acid. And a chemical reaction will now take place between the two. And we get a new compound called calcium hydrogen carbonate. Hydrogen carbonate has a charge of minus one. Calcium has a charge of two plus. Okay. Now, how does this lead to hardness of water? Well, we said earlier that hard water had calcium and magnesium ions dissolved in it. And if we go to our solubility tables, we will find that calcium hydrogen carbonate is actually soluble and therefore is aqueous is its state symbol. And that means now, because we have a calcium ion in there, we've got dissolved calcium in the water, and the water is now what we refer to as hard water. Okay, so you might say, well, what's the problem with that? Mm. Well, it's not such a, a big deal in, in this sort of circumstance where it actually kind of adds a little bit of aesthetics to the, the limestone region. Okay, it'll wear some of that region away over time. Okay, but it is a bit of an issue in um, other aspects, especially in home life. So if we have a little look at that. So if we have a look at this picture, you'll see, if you look on the left hand one with the sink, you'll just see sort of a scale around the sink. Okay, you can see a bit of scale around the tap. And you can probably see a bit around the top of the sink as well. That all comes from hard water. If we look at the middle one, okay, and the, the kettle, these both have become covered in lime scale. And we're going to have a look at the chemistry of lime scale and how that actually forms from hard water. So if you imagine your kettle, the whole point of a kettle is that this metallic heating element gets hot and conducts the heat into the water, and the water eventually boils. Well, if it's covered in lime scale, the heat doesn't pass through lime scale very well, and your kettle becomes ineffective. If you think of your hot water pipe carrying hot water to your boiler, your radiator, well, eventually the amount of water that they can carry becomes minimal, and your heating system, your hot water system, essentially is no longer effective. It breaks down, and that can be quite expensive for households. It can be extremely expensive for uh, industry. So where on earth does this scale and this all come from? Well, we look at the left hand, the chemistry going on in the left hand, in the sink, first of all, and we'll see what what's that all about. And we'll not go into too much detail here because this can be uh, a little bit beyond where we are at GCSE. So I spoke to you earlier uh, about soap. And when I have soap, I essentially have a, a chemical compound called sodium stearate. So that really, uh, soap's got a lot of things in it, but that's the chemical that does the cleaning in soap. And that, that is soluble, okay? It's nice and soluble. I put that into water, it will dissolve up really quite nicely. Now, if I have hard water, I have calcium ions in it, okay, or magnesium ions. And when they come in contact with sodium stearate, what they do is they form calcium or magnesium, I'm not going to write out both every time, stearate, and the sodium ions get displaced, kicked out, if you like. 
Okay, now, what is the problem? Well, unfortunately, calcium stearate does not dissolve. And that is what we refer to as scum. And that is what I have circled here in this picture, which has got the sink and the tap in it. Okay, all these little regions around here are just these little deposits of scum that have formed by the reaction of the calcium and magnesium ions with that active ingredient in the soap. And obviously now my active ingredient soap is waste, it's, it becomes scum, it's no clean. And in fact, it's quite a hassle because it forms marks and residues on showers and sinks, etc. Now, let's have a look at the other two reacts of this solid lime scale type compound and let's look where it comes well. If you look at both of these applications, they both require the water to be hot. Now, let's go back to our, um, our hard water. And our hard water was originally, if you think about it, calcium, hydrogen carbonate. Okay, so let's just put calcium, hydrogen carbonate up there. And let's think about what happens when we heat calcium, hydrogen carbonate. Well, it undergoes a thermal decomposition reaction. And the product of that thermal decomposition reaction of the calcium, hydrogen carbonate is calcium carbonate, some water, and some carbon dioxide, which is a gas. Of course, water is a liquid. Now, what about the calcium carbonate? Well, it is insoluble. And that, then, is the deposits that you see on the kettle, on the element of the kettle there, and the deposit that you see on the inside of the pipe there. So we have calcium hydrogen carbonate thermally decomposing to calcium carbonate, which is the solid that you see there, the blocks your pipes or ruins your kettle. The same is true for magnesium hydrogen carbonate. All you do is simply replace calcium ions with magnesium ions. Okay, so that is the problem. That is where the scum comes from. That is where the hard water, or certainly part of the hard water, comes from. Now, the hard water that we have just spoken about is a type of hard water called temporary hard water. So this calcium hydrogen carbonate, okay, that we spoke about here, okay, or magnesium hydrogen carbonate, is a thing called temporary hard water. And the reason why it's called temporary is because it can be removed by boiling. There's another type of hardness and hard water we're going to look at in a little minute, which can't be removed by boiling and is made, in fact, in a slightly different way. And, of course, we will also have a look at how do we actually get rid of it? How do we remove it? Okay. So, so the second type of hardness that we're going to look at now that we've looked at our temporary hard water and the effect in which heating has in it, we're going to look at permanently hard water. Now, it comes from a slightly different source, okay? It comes from rock, okay, which can be a rock called, the biggest source of it is a rock called gypsum rock, okay? And gypsum rock contains calcium sulfate, okay? And it also comes from rock which contains magnesium sulfate. Now, if you look up in your uh, solubility tables, you'll find that both those compounds really are not particularly uh, soluble. So what, how on earth do the calcium and magnesium ions get into the water? Well, let's have a look. Calcium sulfate or magnesium sulfate is, of course, a solid in the rock. And when water trickles over that very, very slowly, what happens is that just a little bit of it will dissolve. Okay, so you have now got your free calcium ions in solution and you've got the sulfate ions in solution. So in other words, what we've now got are dissolved calcium ions um, and the dissolved calcium ions are the reason why this is now hard water. Okay, so there's no actual chemical reaction taking place in here like we had with the formation of the temporary hard water. We've now got 
just simply the rock dissolving just a tiny little bit into the rainwater as the rainwater passes over it. Now, if I heat calcium sulfate, dissolved calcium sulfate, so if I heat it, oh, sorry about that, there is no effect. So this is called permanently hard water because of the effect in which heating has on it, which is none, in other words, whereas temporary hard water can, of course, be removed by heating it. Okay. <laughs> now, that's all well and good, but what we need to do now is to have a look at, well, how do we get rid of this hardness? Because hardness is a problem, okay, and people do not want it. They don't want it in their in their homes and they certainly do not want it in their uh, businesses. So the first thing, well, we've already sort of covered one, okay, which is this one here, and that we can remove hardness, temporary hardness, by heating it. And what we really need to understand is, well, okay, how is it actually removed? Well, well, we'll go back to our definition of hard water earlier where we said that it was caused by dissolved calcium or magnesium ions in the water. Well, let's have a look here. On this side, I have calcium ions here, calcium hydrogen carbonate, and they are, of course, dissolved in the water. Now I go to the right-hand side and look at our calcium ions. The calcium ions now are solid. In other words, they are no longer dissolved in the water. So I have removed the hardness from the water. So it's quite easy to remove temporarily hard water. Right? Not quite so easy to remove permanently hard water, and it takes a little bit more uh, input. But let's have a look at how we can do that. Right. So the first thing we'll look at is the addition of what we call washing soda. And washing soda is a compound called hydrated sodium carbonate. Hydrated meaning that it is water of crystallization bonded into the crystal structure. Okay, so let's have a look at what happens then. Well, let's take our temporarily hard water. Okay, I'll just use calcium all the time. Okay, and we can react that with Na2CO3 aqueous, I'll not put the waters on, and that gives me calcium carbonate, okay, which is now solid, and sodium hydrogen carbonate, okay, which is aqueous if you go to your solubility tables. So this is why state symbols, guys, is so important. And explaining what is actually going on here. Let's have a look. Originally, again, my calcium was, of course, dissolved in water and it was aqueous. <laughs> now, look at my calcium ions on the right hand side. After the equation, my calcium ions, which are Ca2 plus there, combined with the CO3 2 minus, are now solid, so they're no longer dissolved in the water. Therefore, they do not contribute to hard water. Next, let's have a look at permanently hard water, okay, which is, I'll take calcium sulfate, magnesium sulfate, it will be exactly the same, and hopefully you're starting to see the picture here, <coughs> and you can see, again, on the left-hand side, my calcium ions and my calcium sulfate, Ca2 plus ions, combined with the SO4, two minus ions, they are, of course, aqueous. And if I look at the calcium ions over on the right-hand side now, they are solid. In other words, they're no longer dissolved in water, and therefore, they no longer contribute to hardness in water. Let's look at the next process. So the next process is referred to as ion exchange. So I put up on the on the board now a diagram of ion exchange and if we look at <coughs> if we look at the left hand ion exchange column, okay this one here with the red arrow at it, what you'll see is into that column comes your water pipe which contains your hard water. So it's got calcium and magnesium ions dissolved in it. 
Inside this you have, and we've only got four black ion exchange resin beads in here, but this will be absolutely packed full of these things to give a huge surface area. And they are covered in little sodium Na1 plus ions. Now, as the ion exchange works, and as the, the ions come through, you'll see lots of squares and lots of triangles, in other words, lots of magnesiums and lots of calciums. They are two plus ions. And what they do is they stick to the resin better than the sodiums, which are one plus. So what happens is they displace the sodiums from the water. And if you look at the water at the bottom, it comes out with the sodium ions dissolved in the water and the calcium and the magnesium ions are stuck to the resin, stuck to the beads. So you've essentially removed the hardness, the calcium and magnesium ions from the water. You can reverse this process. You don't just have to throw your ion exchange resin out. By passing back through it a really concentrated solution of brine, which is essentially sodium chloride, which contains, of course, sodium ions and in a really concentrated solution what it will do is we'll just flush the calcium and the magnesium ions back out and you can dispose of those in an appropriate environment so you can reuse your ion exchange resin over and over again so it's really just the magnesium and the calcium ions displacing the sodium ions from the ion exchange resin beads and therefore you remove the calcium and the magnesium ions which are dissolved in water. And therefore you of course remove the hardness. Okay, so what we're going to look at now then is we, the, for higher level you have to be able to write and understand what we call ionic equations. So the ionic equations for the, um, for the formation of the hard water, okay, and then of course the ionic equations for the removal. So what we will do first of all is we'll have a look at the ionic equation for the removal of temporarily hard water. Now, if we looked at temporarily hard water from earlier, okay, we had calcium, hydrogen carbonate, and some of you might want to pause this video and see if you can actually work out the ionic equation associated with this. Okay, so that's what's happening. Now we need to sort of find out, well, what ions is it that actually change and which ions do not actually change? Well, the calcium ion is a Ca2 plus here, and it is also a Ca2 plus here. So if we take my hydrogen carbonate ion, okay, of which I have two of them, it's aqueous over here, well it turns into a carbonate ion, okay, which is now a solid, it turns into water, which is a liquid, and it turns into carbon dioxide, which is a gas. So that's the ionic equation for the removal of temporarily hard water whether it's magnesium hydrogen carbonate or calcium hydrogen carbonate, it doesn't matter. Now, if you don't understand what's going on and how that equation came about, you can either look back over your year 11 writing ionic equations notes. There is also on Firefly a video about writing ionic equations. Um, or you can just learn that, wrote learn it, okay, which is often the way that it quite simply has to be done. Okay, um, so in this one we're going to look at the ionic equation for the removal of a hard water using um, our washing soda that we spoke about previously. Um, and the ionic equation for the removal here is the same in both cases. Okay. In that in both cases, it's the calcium or magnesium, if you choose to write it, ion combines with a carbonate ion to give me calcium carbonate, which is a solid. If you think about it, well, the sodium ion is Na plus aqueous, Na plus aqueous here. It is Na plus aqueous 
there and it is Na plus aqueous there. So it hasn't changed at all. The sulfate ion is a sulfate minus there and the hydrogen carbonate is two minus, sorry for the sulfate ion, is a hydrogen carbonate minus there. Well the hydrogen carbonate ion is exactly the same. HCO3 minus aqueous there and the sulfate is SO4 2 minus and it is also aqueous on both sides. So they do not make their way into the ionic equation. So again, if you struggle to understand where the ionic equations came from, go back and revise that topic from writing formula and equations in the start of year 11 or simply wrote learn it. Okay, I understood how to do it but I fully appreciate that sometimes road learning an equation or two uh, is simply the way that it has to be done. Okay, well look, um, I've nearly covered all of that. We've one more little bit to do, just on removal of hardness. Okay, so we're gonna look at the last method here to remove hardness, one that's not used uh, a particular amount. Um, Namely, mainly because it's quite expensive. If you look down at the bottom here, um, what we've got to do with the incoming hard water from this position here is to heat it. And if we look at the yellow spots in here, you'll see the yellow spots are representing salts. So what we're essentially talking about there are calcium ions and magnesium ions. Now, basically, if we warm the water, the, the calcium and the magnesium ions are the salts in there are not very volatile. In other words, they have high boiling points, high melting points. So when I warm it, the water, which has the lowest boiling point of everything in there, will turn into a vapor. It will rise up and through the pressure generated will be forced over to the other side of the distiller. Okay, at which point it cools down. And when it cools down, it turns back into droplets of water. And those droplets of water are now course or softened water we have again simply removed the salts the calcium and the magnesium ions from the water okay so those are all the methods of removal that's all the chemistry involved in the removal we're going to have a just a very quick uh, look at the pros and the cons of hard water we've already covered the, the cons the disadvantages pretty much in the fact that it will waste soap and um, it will give you that if you go right away back to the start here, um, okay. So if we go back to that slide, we've said that it will give you this unpleasant lime scale around your sinks. It will waste soap. It will cause hot water taps to flare up, okay, which damages your dishwashers, water tanks, kettles. Okay, they may either break or at least not work as effectively. So what are the good or the positive points of this? Well, it has been proven through uh, research that areas which have got hard water, there is a lower incidence of heart disease. Okay, so hard water, um, not to go into too much details, but the calcium ions in that are used in, used in the heart pump, okay? So whenever the heart contracts and relaxes, calcium ions are involved in that. So areas of hard water have got um, reduced levels of heart disease. Reduced levels of cardiac disease. It's also supposed to taste better the calcium and the magnesium ions give it a slightly better taste and in so it's preferred by the brewing industry it's good for your teeth and your bones as well if you think of the calcium and the magnesium ions in there okay used in teeth and bone development both so it's quite an important source of our calcium okay um, it's preferred for tanning leather so industries in which they make leather for your suitcases your clothes etc okay prefer to have hard water in place or hard water as their source of water so those are all the, the benefits of it those are all the positives of it that you need to uh, you need to be aware of um the last thing that i need to look at and we sort of looked at Part of it already is the uh, 
characteristics of an area of hard water and we looked earlier if you remember at the limestone regions we looked at that light what's called open paving okay so if we just go back up to So this is open paving, open limestone paving, where some of the paving, the limestone calcium carbonate, has been eroded away by acid rain. That's typical of a, of a limestone area. This is also characteristic of a limestone area here where you get, and if any of you have been to Marble Arch Caves, you'll have seen this type of characteristic stalactites and stalactites. Okay, um, now you might say, well, what on earth is going is going on there. Well, the chemistry of it's quite simple. When the hard water, let's take it as temporarily hard water. Okay. When it's formed on the outside, what happens is that it simply leaches through the cave. Okay, it comes down. And that's the aqueous. And slowly it comes down and it sits just as little drips on the top of the cave. And the water will very slowly evaporate away. And if the water evaporates away, what you get is solid calcium hydrogen carbonate or magnesium hydrogen carbonate left over. Slowly over many, many thousands, millions of years, those little sediments, those little deposits of calcium hydrogen carbonate build up into these big stalactites, stalactites. And again, you can see state symbols and the chemistry of state symbols, guys, is very, very important in explaining exactly what is going on in there okay well that that's pretty much the chemistry involved in hard water there are a couple of experiments that are in your notes that you will have to learn and do i may well if i have time put a video on those onto the uh, shared area as well okay but uh, as far as hard water and the chemistry and the chemical reactions involved in it i think we've covered pretty much everything there Hope that's of some use to you.